another edition of the S&D Podcast Show, episode 41. Steven is here. Dan, what's going on tonight? Not much. How's it going? Um, another fun pack show this week. Yes. For, before we start, we'd like to say thank you for Lisa for coming on last week. We got a lot of feedback, a lot of positive, uh, just a lot of positive from that uh, episode. So thank you, Lisa, for coming on. Um, yes. It was a Everybody Definitely. who helped out with the donations. Yeah. Thank you, for everybody, for helping out with the donations. The donation's not over. I Before we forget, uh, this Darren from the Seven Line is hosting an event at McFadden's at City Field on Sunday. Um, there's going to be a lot of raffles. Um, I saw on Facebook that half the Mets team signed all the uh, baseballs for the event. Kevin Burkhardt has a nice benefit, uh, raffle for that. A bunch of other fun stuff. So if you're not doing anything Sunday, head over to City Field for the game. And then after the game, come to McFadden's and help our friend out. Help our friend out. She's in need. And uh, we're hoping for a big turnout. And it's going to be a fun day. Hopefully the Mets win. But overall, it's going to be a fun day at McFadden's on Sunday. Yes. Also, uh, just so everybody knows, tonight's song, Division 1.1, Violence in Season. They are in studio currently working on some new material. So make sure to look out for that. Um, Which I definitely are. am looking forward for more Division 1.1. Also, check out their Facebook page. for uh, They have some nice uh, buttoned-out T-shirts with the logo on it. They got some trucker hats with them on as well. All right. That's so pretty awesome. Check them out. Um, I do know they're working and works with some sh- places for some shows coming up. So a lot of big things coming from them, just like we have a lot of big things coming uh, tonight. Basically, real start of our football season. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to... We're not really going to talk about last week's Jets and Giants games because it's whatever. But the Snoopy Bowl this week, <laughs> the Jets and Giants, it's the third preseason game. Both teams are going to be gearing up and their starters are going to be playing the most they're going to play for the whole preseason. And probably the last time you'll see the main guys, definitely for the Giants. The Jets are in a different scenario, but we'll, we'll talk get into about that We'll later. talk into that. Also, the, the return of A-Rod. The return of A-Rod. Has he sparked the Yankees? I It'll we both we have both I, have opinions. The Yankees did finally wake up, but and we also have the scrappy Mets who we'll, we'll get in more into the Mets. The Mets are the Mets. Um, but right now, let's play a little more violence in the season, and we'll be right back with the Yankees. <laughs> Back to the S and D podcast. Dan here with Steve. We're gonna start the night off with the little Yankee baseball, the hottest team in New York right now. Uh, where do you want to begin? Uh, I think the Red Sox woke up the Yankees sleeping giant. Uh, I don't think it was really the Red Sox because was, right before then they took two out of three against the the Tigers. No, but le, le, they took three out of four against the Angels. Oh, all since A Rod came back. No, I know. Le, le, let me finish. Let me finish though. Yeah, you're right with the wins in total. But the sleeping giant was slowly waking up. But then Ryan Dempster decides to beam ball, miss A-Rod three or four times, and then he finally beamed him. Everybody but CC Sabathia that night went off that night. Yeah. And and it was a it was amazing to see, and it was funny to see the Facebook statuses and the Twitters that A-Rod, the most hated Yankee ever, once so just because it's a Yankee Red Sox, Ryan Dempster. They forgot that he was under the cloud of steroids and he was a Yankee again for sort of thing. And it was kind of like awesome to see the reaction of everybody. A couple of friends who hate A-Rod with passion. He goes, I would, ne- I never thought I was going to be cheering for A-Rod this year. Like, I'm like, well. Yeah, people who don't like A-Rod like A-Rod this year. People who like A-Rod don't like A-Rod. Yeah, it's it, like everybody switched places in the A-Rod. Yeah. Do you like him or not? Um, well, the Yankees are happy because they are trying to... They're trying to. Uh, they're they're just trying to take care of. Um, just try to get wins for the Yankees right now. They're outside looking up, looking outside looking in right now at the playoffs, and they're gonna try to get the second wild card spot. Um, it's it looks pretty reasonable right now. They're only six out from the uh, first place, so it's it's getting really interesting to see what the Yankees have left in the tank. The, Pitching is still a big, big question mark. And the Yankees' bats wake up and stay awake and just keep plowing through teams right now. Um, at the moment, we're, we are recording on two, uh, Wednesday night, and the Yankees are tied 1-1 with the Blue Jays. Uh, former Met Ari Dickey's on the mound, and he, boy, he has he come back to earth this year. Um, Whatever. Yeah, no problem anymore. Yeah, sad to see, but, but at least he's not doing it with the Mets. Uh just it's just with it's just one of those things they took 
both games last night. Uh, Knicks with a clutch home run in the nightcap and then yes. winning it in the bottom of the ninth. So very, very good job out of him. The unusual suspects pretty much coming through in the clutch last night. So kudos to that. And before I forget, congratulations to Ichiro. He did get his 4,000 hit in America and Japan combined tonight. Yes. So congratulations to a one-of-a-kind ball player, one of the greatest ever, to Ichiro yeah, Zizuke. Players ever. Yeah, you're right. Um, as we move forward, don't forget, this is episode 41, so we're going to do our Yankees. You mentioned one before we started the segment. Uh, well, he wasn't a good Yankee, but he was a, Yan- uh, he was a Yankee for a short time. His memorable moment as a Yankee, well, for both of us Met fans, is Mr. Q giving up a big hit, big <laughs> double. Um, is Randy Johnson the big unit and shoving a camera guy in his face, uh, shoving a camera in the camera guy's face, the first day he, he was in New York. So he wasn't the best Yankee, but he wore 41 regardless. So yes. Randy Johnson is the uh, Yankee of the night, which wasn't unless you want to go long. Miguel Cairo. Miguel Cairo is a good serviceable bench player who came through in the clutch with pitch hits. So Miguel Cabrera. Just about uh, every team Miguel, in baseball. Miguel Cra- Cairo and. Yeah. Don't, t- yeah. don't call uh, Miguel Cabrera yeah, no, a no. pitch hitter. Miguel Cairo and Randy Johnson. And the Yankees this weekend. Uh, let's see who they have. Oh, they the have. Rays. The Rays. No. Oh, yeah. They do have the Rays. The big bad Rays right now. After tomorrow's 1 o'clock start, they have. Oh, the 20 seconds, 1 o'clock. Yeah. The 22nd is a 1 o'clock start, and then they have three in Tampa. Yankee Stadium Part 2, as Yankee fans like to call it. Yeah, uh, they call every other stadium Yankee Stadium Part 2. But the Trop more than any other stadium. Well, yeah, that's because everybody from New York lives down there. Have, them, in have Flo- there. And them in Boston. Uh, that's going to be an interesting sta- uh, Gui series. Tampa, Tampa is really, really, really red hot right now. Um, what which games? Actually, let's see. It's just gonna be one of those crazy situations, and like, let's see what happens. It's gonna be Corona Friday night, Sabathia Saturday, and Nova Sunday. Question is, which Sabathia will pitch? We need then Sabathia hasn't been pitching well. He's eleven and ten, and it's just not Sabathia light. Some, it was five runs before the fourth, fifth inning the other uh, yeah, Sunday. Yeah, something's not right with CC and. Gotta go it's back not, to the cereal. It, they need they need the old ace CC for him to be with Kuroda. And the rest of the lineup pitching staff has been pretty decent other than Hughes, which we've been mentioning every week. Um, Hughes actually pitched well, was it last night, the night before? It was the, the night act- before, yeah. It was last night, the oh, 20th. It was last night? Yeah, he pitched the nightcap. Oh, yeah, that's right. I apologize. On the 20th. Um, he didn't get the win, but he did pitch the game. No, uh, he did not pitch yesterday. Um, yes, he did. No, he didn't. It was Warren and Pettit. No. Oh, Warren's the reliever. My bad. He started the night game yesterday against the Blue Jays. Okay. I know because Matt and Kayla went. Okay. Oh, yeah, Hughes. That's right. I apologize. I'm so, looking at the wrong number. And the Ageless game. Wonder got the loss for the Blue Jays and Darren Oliver. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he's still hey, pitching. He hey, was, what, he's like, money. 10 years ago? Hey, he's still getting paid. He misses the Angels, though. Does he? Yeah, he definitely does. He was good with the Angels. That's why I said that. Um, he's good with the Mets, too. Yeah, he was as the long man. Anyway, the Yankees have a huge series against Tampa Bay. Um, I I want to say the Yankees take two out of three just because they're red hot. But Tampa is a better team this year. So Tampa's also a hot team. Tampa's really hot. I, I'm going to say Tampa takes two out of three. It's going to be a fun weekend. But uh, it's a nice who does Tampa have pitching this weekend? Tampa has Archer, Price, and Rogers. So actually... It could, actually, the Yankees could, the Yankees go, could take two out of three. The Yankees could easily take two out of three. And the Yankees play well against Price. Yeah, this is true. So I, I take that back. Yankees are going to take two out of three. Yeah, I could see that. Um, yeah, I could definitely see that. And then the Rays have a, a random game against, random game at the – Rays' schedule is the 23rd, 24th, 25th home against the Yankees. The 26th in Kansas City. The 27th home against the Angels. That probably was a rain out. That definitely was a rain out. Like, yeah, but they like, planned it where they have to go leave. If they're on the road and they do that, that's one thing. But if they're but they're yeah, home on prob- the road was, for a day. It was probably because that was the only time both teams had off. Okay. Um, then after that series, the Yankees are going back, go play in the Toronto Blue Jays again, but this time in Canada. So the Yankees, can, the Yankees could easily be back into the race by... By the end of by Monday of they next weekend, technically so, still in the race right now. But but I mean more even more so actually like. Are you thinking division race or are you thinking thinking division big picture? Okay, 
Because they're what out of the wild? They're four and a half out of a wild card spot. Right? And that's that could that could easily do that. There isn't that one powerhouse team. There isn't one powerhouse team in the AL to um to hit, just to knock the Yankees out. So the Yankees are possibly able to come back and find a way to the playoffs, like I predicted in our both baseball shows, because I knew the Yankees, granted they're getting older, but they're still going to find a way to make the playoffs. So I, I can't wait to say I told you so, hopefully. but <laughs> he did, and also our friend Matt today posted on both his Twitter and Facebook that the Yankees are going to make the playoffs. And he said that we heard it there first, but I corre- I texted him and corrected it for you. Yeah. We heard it from you and, first. And, and, and what's his face? Mike did too, but he's a Yankee fan, so of course he's going to say that. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I did say the, the Yankee- evil empire is waking up. That's how I see it. Mm-hmm. So. so yeah, um, it's going to be interesting. We said it two weeks ago when they were struggling. How much baseball can just swing easily? It it, it it's it, still it's just the way the game is. It's like we've been saying. I'm I'm actually happy we're finally being able to talk about the Yankees. The last three weeks were just a rod, a rod, a rod, a rod, a rod, a rod, a rod. This week, of a rod, one is a rod coming back. Blah blah blah. It's it's th- it's just one of those things. The Yankees are finally pitching as a team and they're playing playing as a, a team. team and thanks to Ryan Dempster for finally waking that up. Uh, you never see Joe Girardi freak out like that. You you never see Joe Girardi freaking out like that. But he had a he no had no, a, and he had to do it. He was sticking up for his teammate, no matter how much of a dirtbag everybody knows A Rod is. He had every right to because Dempster didn't get Dempster should have been thrown out of that game. He had a point. Yeah, four yeah. Thro- four balls. Yeah, right at him. Exactly. <laughs> and the first one you understand. If the second one hits him, you understand. Then it's fine. You give him warnings. The fact that he threw all four at him. Yeah. Says something. And and all the players got A Rod's back too, and that's a good thing to see as a Yankee fan. Um especially the circus that A Rod causes. You you don't expect that all the time, but when it when it, it matters in the game, everybody's gonna pick up. You might not believe or respect what he's done or do does. But they are definitely picking him up as a teammate at the moment. By the way, Derek Jeter is engaged, by the way. Might as well we're talking about the Yankees. So, mazel tov to him. Derek Jeter is engaged? Yeah, last week. I don't want to talk about engaged. Paulina Gretzky got engaged this week. Okay. Paulina Gretzky got engaged really, to a golf, some golfer guy. Mazel tov She's off the her. market, and I don't want to talk about it. Okay, mazel tov <laughs> to her. Um, anyway. Stole my woman. <laughs> Anyway, mazel tov to Derek Jeter, um, to all those girls that... Got the gift baskets. Those gift baskets, <laughs> they are officially... Whatever, they're collecting order. their millions off eBay. Yep. <laughs> so, anyway, that's our Yankees this week. Um, here's more Division 1.1, 1. 1, and we're going to talk about a little bit of Mets baseball. s and Podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by Major League Baseball or any of its affiliates. <laughs> Welcome back to the S&D Podcast Show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Once again, that was Division 1.1 with violence in the season. Uh, well, it's pretty simple. We might as well just start off with it. episode 41. Yep. Nobody's ever going to wear it again. Well, no one has been wearing it since the 80s. Late uh, 80s. Probably, what, 86? I pro- think it was. Rough, roughly around there. Tonight's show is obviously for Tom Terrific, Tom Seaver, the chairman. The franchise, I should say. Um, pretty much the best Met player since ever. Uh, so tonight's episode is for Tom Seaver. Uh, where should we start off with the Mets? The Mets, the Mets. They finally come home from the West Coast trip in that one random game against the Twins. They uh, split the series against the Braves, the two games uh, series. Um, tonight they played a day game and they lost in a crushing loss in the 10th inning. Um, arguable play at first base where the Mets should have gotten out of the inning. And they um, called the base run, uh, Friedman safe and... The Mets crumbled after that and gave up a three-run shot and ended the game, pretty much, essentially. So it was just one of those tough games. Daniel Murphy and Harry Collins both got ejected. It was nice to see them show some life, but granted, it was too little too late because the game was already over. No one's coming back. The Mets are not coming back three runs against Kimball for nope. a save. So, Especially without your daddy, Valdez, being yes, there. Usually of course. It's there, his one home run. <laughs> so... The Mets lost a tough one, but they did win a, ni- a very nice win last night. Wheeler pitched another great game until he ran out of gas. Yes. Gave up those three. Um, the three runs go credit towards him, but he didn't actually give it up. So 
He pitched pretty well. Six wins and twelve six starts. Well, yeah, six. He is six and two right now, and it was his best home start so far, and hopefully yeah. for many for Zach Wheeler. So that was nice to see. Uh, I hit a bomb last night, which was nice. They to almost see cleared the Pepsi it was Porch. Home Derby style. Yeah, so that was nice to see Ike to do that. It would be awesome to see it a little bit more often. But beggars can't be choosers, especially with Ike. So that was nice. Um, he pretty much took care of business with uh, the Twins the night day before. Oh, f- may I for say, may I f- before I forget? Congratulations to Marlon Bird for having a career high in home runs this so yeah, so far. Twenty one, twenty. Twenty one this year. So twenty one so far. Can in his- you argue him for NL comeback player of the year? Yeah, he should win NL comeback player of the year. I don't see anybody else. Who else, who else re- is really coming back from anything? Not yeah. It should be him. It should be him. Juan Lagares is still playing good. He's earning his keep as well. You could argue him. Well, no. No, he doesn't. He could have- be a finalist for a Gold Glove. Um, possibly. He did make a couple of nice web gems against the Twins the other day, but uh, he's not gonna. He's there's gonna be not. That's not gonna happen. He hasn't been in the league long enough for him to be considered. So maybe in the years to come, if he still keeps his head straight and continues to hit the way he's supposed to hit and play the field he's supposed to, anything can absolutely happen. So keep it up, Juan Lagares is gonna be good. Um, who the Mets play this week? Oh boy, the big. Bad, the big bad Detroit Tigers. I was about to say Lions just for a second. An interesting matchup. So you got uh, uh, Torres versus Fister all right, Friday. That's going to be a rough game. Harvey Sch- Scherzer on. Yeah, that's going to be a great one. Rematch of the All Star game. And then G, who's been pitching lights out as of late, versus Parcello. You don't know which Rick Parcello is going to come, but he's. Don't forget Sunday. Yes. Love I've for Lisa at McFadden's. Love for Lisa at McFadden's, our good friend Lisa. Uh, benefit for her. Darren from the set line has done an amazing job so far. Definitely big, big kudos to the Mets players themselves for donating a lot of the items. So come if you're, you have nothing to do, and or if you're already going to be at the game on Sunday, come to McFadden's after the game. Maybe uh, donate a couple of raffles, and maybe you get one of these awesome prizes. Uh, so many base so autograph baseballs. Uh, David Wright, a lot, a lot uh, of Harvey players on the Wheeler. Team. Latroy Hawk Hawkins, Latroy Hawkins. Um, Dylan G has a ball and a bat. Uh, not ball and gloves. I'm sorry. Um, bunch of other awesome stuff. Peyton signs with uh, Doc Gooden and Mookie Wilson, just to name a few things. So it's definitely gonna be a fun event. I'm I'm gonna be there. So if you see me, say hi. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not sure who's coming yet, but it's gonna be fun. And um, unfortunately, Steve has uh, prior engagements, but yes. he's going to be there in spirit as well. And um, representing the podcast on Sunday. Yeah, so I, I'm very glad to be. Ho- hopefully, I can help out in any way I possibly can. Uh, but th- th- unfortunately, the Tigers are going to take two out of three. I don't see Carlos Torres doing anything special, especially against the powerhouse lineup of the Detroit Tigers. And Fister's too good for the Mets lineup as of late. The uh, best game is going to be Harvey Scherzer, the four o'clock game on Fox. That's going to be an interesting game. It's going to be it's going to be obviously low scoring as we would we would expect with uh, Scherzer and the and Harvey pitching, but anything could happen. Hopefully, that's going to be a, let's find a way to score some runs and Harvey pitches like Harvey. So that's going to be a battle from of the two starters for the All Star game. And then Sunday is Dylan G, who's been playing lights out as of late. Goes against Rick Porcello, like I said. He's very Jekyll and Hyde. He could have a game where he'll strike out 10, or he won't be able to get out of the second inning kind of starts. So it would be very interesting to see which uh, Porcello comes out. He is a local kid from Jersey, so he should be amped up with family and friends being at City Field on Sunday. So what do, what do you think this weekend's going to entitle for the Mets? Like you said, two out of three. <laughs> Cabrera is going to make our ballpark look like it's a little league park. So is Prince. Prince always makes every park look like it's a little league park. Um, yeah. I want to throw this out there right now since the Mets are playing the Tigers and we're discussing them. I think Miguel Cabrera is going to win another triple crown. This year. He has a shot. I think he's going to do it. I think if, Chris Davis is going to fall off in September uh, yeah, on the home run fa- run. If he falls off in September, Chris Davis, he has a shot. But I think, I think Cabrera is going to end up doing it. That would be an impressive feat. And I, 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 I would love to see that because how often do you see back-to-back defending? How often do you see one? Actually, that's my <laughs> point. That's my point exactly. Forget, forget back-to-back, so back, just one. That would definitely be a greedy thing, but honestly, that would be awesome to see. Um, Yeah, that lineup's just 
I can't even name anybody else in that lineup, but it's filthy. No, uh, there's too many names. Um, Victor Martinez. And just That's right. Victor, well, Martinez is basically the DH. Yeah, he's pretty much the DH, but he's hitting over 300. So. Luckily, he'll probably catch one game. Yeah, he'll probably catch one he game. He might play first. Yeah, he also plays first base, so he could end up playing first base over the weekend. Oh, for if Prince needs a day off, so oh, that's he, right, Prince is the first baseman. So <laughs> it's, silly me. It's gonna be interesting to see what Victor Martinez P- does. Prince in outfield. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> don't go around. Um, anyway, rumbling and jumbling. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and um, then they got the Phillies, who made some interesting news since yeah, our last show. Charlie Manuel's Charlie been fired. Manuel got fired. That's he has our, he has the best manager in Phillies history, so. Kudos to him. Uh, much, much respect to him. So yeah, Santa Claus. Santa Claus and his hillbilly accent. Look, um, look at Philly trimming the weight. Andy Reid got fired. Yeah, they're gonna <laughs> be the skinniest coaching staffs combined <laughs> in the in all four major sports. Um, <laughs> look at them getting skinny. Yeah, they're. I they're, mean, Chip Kelly's got a little bit of a gut. But no, no, nothing compared to Andy Reid and uh, <laughs> uh, Andy Reid and Charlie Emanuel. You know who cried when they got. When he got fired, the Philly cheesesteak places. Eh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. I see. I see what you did there. Um, <laughs> Come on, they've they, already lost Andy Reid. If now that there's they're, they're, a, there's a nice place. little home stand, then then they play at Washington against the Nets, and then the road again against the Braves, the Mets, and the Indians. Gotta love those random interleague games. Yeah. For example, that uh, the Yankees and Red Sox on Sunday played uh, an 8 o'clock game the next night. The Indians are the last quote-unquote interleague play the Mets have for the rest of the season, which is pretty nice. Then uh, then the next th- Monday, right now, Boston's in the middle of a series in San Francisco. Yeah, so it's uh, <laughs> it's weird, to say the very least. Uh, I oh, don't, don't know. forget that big doubleheader against the Marlins the Mets have. A- oh, yeah, that's going to be a huge doubleheader. <laughs> to do big, that big, like big. we did a couple bunch of years ago, like 10 years ago. Never again. Mike Pell from my Pearl Free's Major League debut. Was Great. it? Yeah. The only thing I remember is Jose Valentin had yeah. a, like yeah. a grand slam and then Did, almost uh, an inside the clear, park. Base over. clearing triple. And then got thrown out of the plate, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. That's he right. went for the inside the park yes, home run. that's right. Absolutely. He just had one of those ridiculous games. <laughs> anyway, I think the Mets could definitely find a way to take two out of three against the Phillies. And then the Nats are not as good as everybody's advertised, so... Anything can happen, like we say in baseball, every week, depending on the hot streaks and who the Mets face and who the Mets send out. The Mets could easily... Would it be crazy to say the Mets might finish in second place if the Nats fall off the face of the earth <laughs> as the biggest disappointment? I so say they season? won't because Harvey's limit's almost up and so is Wheeler's. So basically, we're looking at a rotation of Nice. Which is good. I don't Torres. Hey. G. He's been doing good. Schwinden, possibly. Yeah, it's going to be rough <laughs> towards the end of the season. But but if you came to us in the beginning of the year, the Mets would finish in second place. You look, if, we if, I look told, at, if I told you in April the Mets would finish in third place, what would you say? Yeah, you're freaking nuts. Okay. Um, So that's my that's my point. That is, I'll take third place. I'm not going to oh, push for second. Absolutely. Like the but, possible rotation we have. But it's fun to see the lineup every day now. You got Laguerre's in it. You got Denard has been called up. Yeah, Congratulations he, to him on his first career hit yesterday. Now try and get a couple more, buddy. He will. <laughs> Right. Um, you got uh, t- you got uh, Flores in the lineup now. Talks today about moving him to short when Wright comes back, which, which I, I approve. Which we've been Tommy and I, we've had Tommy on. He's been fighting for it. They want him in every other position except for short. That's the perfect spot for him with yeah. this team. Wasn't that his original spot? Or yeah, the, okay. but he's got apparently he's got bad feet. But the way I see it is, you have his the bad. month of September. Yeah, you have winter ball and you have spring training for him to get his feet together. Exactly. So. Uh, I'll tell you what, if they go into next year with an infield of Davis, Davis and Duda I, I fight kinda, for I first place. Hope, I kind of hope we go get an off uh, first baseman in the offseason, I'll be honest with you. Um, and we get one more outfielder with our pitching surplus in the the minors and what we have now. Maybe sprinkle in a couple of bullpen guys. I think we could contend for playoffs next year. All depends if the Mets stick to the plan and find a way to get those players to, within budget. We're clearing a lot of space. So. Tell you what, Nelson Cruz will be inexpensive. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I would not mind Nelson Cruz. Be a little bit of an upgrade for Marlon Bird. Yeah, um, but if Marlon Bird does come back next year, um, he'll probably be the fourth or fifth outfielder on the team. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see. Um, the Mets still have to play out the rest of the games of the, the remaining month and a half. Yay! But, but 
but it, they're play they're wa- they're they are watchable opposed to other years when it's just like okay the season's over but we're gonna still watch anyway because we're Met fans but they're actually watchable I I can s- actually say I I want to watch the Met game tonight because so and so is playing or so and so is pitching and you don't necessarily have said that the last few years but you know what else is the best part about this time of the year what. Football season. season. Yes. So let's go play a little more violence in the season, and we'll be right back with some football. SMD Podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by Major League Baseball or any of its affiliates. Football is back in the air. Two weeks of preseason's over. Training camp's ended today. Yeah. Um, 21st. Well, public well, public training camp is over. Right. Training camp's still going on. Uh, today was the last day of uh, open practice for Giants. Um, and Jets. Uh, well, yeah, the Jets. Most teams. Most well, teams. Well, the Jets came back from Cortland this week, so they. I didn't know if they had any. They had a open couple practice. open practices oh, okay. locally okay, that's um, nice. in Floral Park. And, but most of the teams usually end around now, usually after the middle of the week, and this is the third preseason games when they really start. Yeah. The Snoopy Bowl. The Snoopy Bowl. Um, Giants have two of them, right? I, I, I don't really count. <laughs> but if you look at Steve Weatherford's uh, Instagram Twitter, the last couple of days. He's working out with them. He's working out with them. Um, <laughs> it's it's fun. The, it's like a little friendly rivalry, but it obviously... If the Jets win this year, I'm not going to cry over it, and Jeff fans are going to. I'm be never like, crying over it if the Jets beat us. In the uh, ex- exactly. Um, it, I'm more por- I'm more worried about everybody staying healthy and maybe the Giants score a red zone touchdown. Let's see who's laughing in November when. Well, that, that, I'm not even talking about that. Who ca- who cares? The Jets are in a different division, different confidence. We don't play them this year. It it, do- it really doesn't matter. All that banter. The Jets fans know what they're in store for this year, and hopefully the Jets surprise us. Hopefully they could be a lot like the Mets and put up a fight. How does that sound? Let let them put up a fight. Exactly. So it's gonna be interesting. I it it it's gonna be more interesting on the Jets side of things. Um, supposedly it hasn't been out yet, but supposedly um, you know, Geno Smith. Smith is gonna be getting uh, first team reps for the first half of the Jet game on. Saturday. Did you see Sanchez's look last week? Yeah, the Fu Manchu. He, he, he was, just wants people to make fun of him. Yeah, he just he's, he does doesn't care anymore. He's at that point. He's 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 having the Fu Manchu goatee. He has the soccer hair and on. He just doesn't care. He he, he knows that he's a laughing stock. He's just making people. He just, he just doesn't care at this point. Um, he knows his starting job is in risk right now. If Geno Smith's ankle is okay, he. I I I I hope Sanchez starts the first couple of games so Geno Smith can get more acclimated with the playbook kind of thing and see where he goes. Oh, I just that. want Sanchez to throw a pick to Rivas in week one. Week one, which I, it could easily happen. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. To see. Well, most of his picks usually go to the defensive linemen. So yeah, so uh, it from the Jets side of things, it's seeing what the offense can do with Geno Smith and Mark Sanchez and how they can move the ball. Um. With the Giants, it's pretty much keep let's moving the ball, stay healthy. Put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, we got to keep on moving the ball and hopefully scoring a touchdown. It, we, if I was have been that has been our biggest uh, pitfall in the preseason so far. Um, also, is the defense um, how we how we have been able to stopping the run a little bit. The offense, uh, the secondary was kind of shaky. They got burnt by uh, the Colts a little bit. Granted, one touchdown was a gimme. Fluky touchdown I never saw ever with Aaron Ross, but it happened neither the last. Uh, that the, would happen to Aaron Ross, though. Yeah, that would happen to Aaron <laughs> Ross. Thank God that was a re- uh, preseason game because if it was a regular season game, it would be awful. You know, it's funny. Um, the next time he would go out there, if he made a hit, he'd do that little dance thing yeah, he does. Like, yeah. he's the shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is Aaron Ross to a T. But he's had a good camp so far, so give him credit. Um, apparently T2 had a great camp today, so he had a couple of picks, Yes. Which is great to see. I hope he finds a way to make the team and You got to think he will make the team with the short with the uh the lack of depth on the yeah. defensive back safety situation. Um I know they said Antrell should be practicing by the Ant- end of the week. Antrell is going to be ready to play. He's definitely playing week 1 against the Cowboys. There's um, no question about it. I don't see him playing in the preseason games. I can no see point. him being like RG3 and wanting to play in the preseason yeah, games. Yeah, but there there is zero need for him to be playing. Especially, 
He's definitely not going to play on on Saturday, and he's definitely not playing against the New England Patriots. He might not even go to New England. So that's just that doesn't even matter. It's really not a big. I'll deal. tell you that he will go to New England because one thing I noticed being at the Colts game on Sunday was Antrell Roll. After almost every play, he was out there talking to the young guys, and he was giving them a lesson, telling them if they did something wrong, propping them if they did something right. He was being the Antro role leader that we're looking for. So I say he'll be in New he'll England. He'll be there, just but he's cause not going to suit up. He won't suit up, but he's going to basically be a coach mm-hmm. in New England. So I'm excited about the season. Before we keep going, next week we will have our football preview. Yeah, we're going to have our football preview next week. Um, the one giant um, that I've been hearing on Big Blue Kickoff, um, I'm not bringing it out on my own butt, but uh, Big Blue Kickoff, and I actually saw his kick return in Gills last week against the, the Colts. Cox is having a good shot of making the team through that way. He's a rookie out of... What's his name? Uh, Paul... UMass, Paul Dottino. Paul Dottino is the guy raving, rip, raving about rip, him all, all, all summer. All summer. So uh, I hope to see more out of him. He can be our complimentary third back out of the backfield. Um, David Deal is unfortunately out for six weeks, which is... He hasn't played in two years. It sucks because uh, we were hoping that he can groom Pew a little bit and then Pew will play. Right, But, but it now, also hurts with the fact that Boss is now Boss, out, yeah, and Boss they don't know if he's going to be out. Um, so so been. it's going to be a lot of under fire. Um, uh, that means I'm assuming Booth is going to be moving to center. Uh, they they Mosley, said it today. Mosley's going to be playing guard, and, and uh, Pew's going to be playing tackle. I think it was Brewer. Brewer, Bre- It's Brewer and Mosley mixing and matching. It's it's either or. Um, Apples, it's I know I know Pew tomato. was definitely in. Pew's definitely in a tackle. And, and Jim Cro- today today is Crotal Booth at left guard, Pew at right tackle. Yeah, it, it could go either way. Crotal's the one who came in. He's yeah. the back. He, he didn't play terrible. The backup center. He didn't play terrible. He he really didn't. Like everybody said the past couple of years, and and you know, and everybody really knows when it comes to an offensive line, it's about the way they gel. Mm-hmm. When one moves, they all have to move type thing. Yeah, so really, it, that's what it, it, it is—a one down, unit. So. As long as they're being able to communicate, right. uh, signal down the middle linebacker and the blitzes, and being able to keep Eli on his feet, that's at the end of the day, that's all we need. This this injury really makes the Snee getting healthy for Week One yes. more important than anything else. If you really got to think about it, because he is the the oldest guy on the line now at this point. He is the oldest guy on the line, and, and it, him and Booth are the two vets on the line. So. It, it's, who's the other? Who's the other end guy? It's gonna be. Who's the other tackle? It would be. It was Booth. No, Booth is the guard. It was Booth? I was deal. Um. Snee. No. Booth. Right tackle is Pew. Left guard is is uh is Booth. Right guard is Snee. Center is Crotal. Who's put? Po- oh, Beatty. Yeah, Beatty. Yes. I forgot about Beatty. I don't know why. <laughs> Beatty. Beatty has to finally come into his own. He's oh, solid. Yeah, first round, second round. Pick. Second round. Pick. He was the year we drafted JPP. Yeah. He's a solid player. Um. Out of Connecticut. Hopefully we get a little bit more out of him. This year is, is going to be his time to shine. This, this is the year where he comes into the year healthy. Yeah. He's going to so. be around all year. It's either... One thing I saw out of him was he was very quick to the ball. Everybody. ball he, he was strong. I, I liked yeah. the way he played the other day, uh, watching him on Sunday. Yeah, he the was thing a plus. With the, the thing with the Giants that scared me the last couple of years is the power, power running game. Oh, um, yeah. And... And maybe it's because of the old guys and they're not the quick spring, but I I think with them they have to they have to they have to find a way to bring that youthful energy and that experience and form it into one solid unit. It, giving up sacks isn't their problem. They're, they're for the most part they're pretty clean. It's pushing the line. It's it's pretty much the it's running the game. short yard. It's, it's pretty much the running game and the and short yard. Sunday. They there, it there was no push. There was no push on Sunday. I think it was one. Yeah, first drive of the game. Well, was it one at the at like the that six? That was more of the tight ends' problems. Um, if you look at it, um, Robinson got blown up, Myers got blown up, and Pascal got blown up. It was more of the tight ends, and the tight ends have to do a better job blocking. Um, it's it's a it's a total team effort. The Giants just need to find a way to get that running game going. Because if the Giants get that running game going, their offense is unstoppable this year with health. If as long as they stay healthy, they are the top five offense. Maybe top three, arguably. If they're healthy. If they're healthy. 
and there's no way of them not being stopped by anybody if that's if that's the case. So, um, the Giants defense, um, there's going to be more linebacking problems. I mean, not problems, more linebacking uh, competition. Looks like Dan Connors has uh, taken the lead out of against Mark Karzlak on the starting middle linebacker. Job. You got to think that it's Connors' job. Yeah. Um, to lose at this point. Yeah, it, it, at the moment, it's pretty much all but sealed. Connor's been playing great. Uh, I like Spencer Payne Singer, but Jaquan Williams is making a run for money. I like both linebackers. They have a, that could be your three. Um, I think Rivers, Keith Rivers, is solid, but he hasn't really he's proven at that much. age. He's at that age where he's just like. But he's not that old. He's not that old. Football years wise, yeah, it, he's that old. I I I think. I, I, I your f- your top four are going to be Payson and, I, and I, honestly, I hope Aaron Curry finds a way to get on this team. I hope he finds a way to get Is on this team. Is he playing? He's playing with the second team. So he's playing decent, but he probably might not make the team. I wouldn't be shocked if he didn't. But it would be nice just an extra pass rusher to make the team. But with our depth in linebacker, we probably won't have t- room for him. So anything can possibly happen but those are the main like I six say, guys our four are probably Pacinger, Williams uh, Connors as the three starters and then Herslick is the fourth guy Herslick and Rivers you mentioned I think it'll end up being Curry over Rivers you think so I think they're gonna go on their youth with Curry Rivers is not that old. I don't know football why. Wise, I don't know fo- why you're thinking he's that football much wise he's older been, than Curry though he because he is He's not that much young, older. He's definitely much older. He's been around. He played for the Bengals for what? A couple years? years. Not no way. Been ten years. He was with Pete Carroll in USA. I feel like no, he's he, he's, he's not thirty. Okay, he's he is thirty. He's been there for a while, but he he's not that old. He had a, he has Curry's twenty seven. Yeah, it's three year different. It really it really isn't that big. But but then again, it'll be interesting because there's a lot of defensive linemen themselves. Well. The defensive lineman right now, uh, Marvin Olsen probably won't even make the team. Bunch Practice guys, squad, I told you before the segment. If he's see. able to do it, great, but I wouldn't be shocked if he doesn't make the team. It's just the surplus of Colin Jenkins and Colin Jenkins and Mike Patterson and Sean, Williams from, uh, War- Sean Rogers from last year. It's just too many big bodies, and hopefully they bring more st- run stopping and they're just able to be beasts in the middle and clog it. And hopefully w- when JPP comes back healthy and Tuck comes back healthy, they they are able to rush the quarterback and just feast on them all day long in Kiwanuka. It's going to be really awesome to see, especially with them able to stop the run. And that makes our court run- linebackers even better and be able to stop the run a little bit better because they're able to clog the holes. That's our key for the season. Like every other giant competitive team, it's our defensive line. If we can get to the quarterback, we're going to be a good team. So yeah, We'll have a solid defense. But then again, we also have to stop the guys. One guy who's been impressive is Prince. Prince has been impressive. He's finally getting his uh, first uh, his first round draft pick uh, camp. talent. Yeah, he, first camp. Yeah, first camp. Really. <laughs> um, last year he had a little bit, but two it years was, two years ago was he had no off season. Wash out, no off season, and he had no training camp. So that second was second day of camp. He, he broke his foot. Yeah, his first day because he um, held out for a couple of days. That's right. And then last year he he pulled a hammy. I think it was early. Yeah, he pulled a hammy towards the end of camp, but. He was there. It, it, he, he this was his first real full length camp, and he w- came on at the end of the season. Even though not a lot of people are going to say that because of the Giants' pass oh, offense yeah, yeah. defense, but he really came on to his own. And he he's he's going to be our starting uh, cornerback this year. One of the next to Aaron, um Corey Webster. Um, hopefully Corey Webster bounces back this year. If he doesn't, it's going to be a wrap for him, unfortunately. But he is a solid. DB when he has his head straight and everything like that. So the Giants secondary could be really, really good if we get the pass rush and everything like that. Yeah, and then of course the offense, like we said, needs to have that second push when it comes to defensive line and not defensive line, but offensive line. Um, when it comes to those short downs they showed Sunday, like I said, there's a couple of with the ones where Got to get that push. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's the offensive line just. Getting Unfortunately, pushed. Andre Brown is in a tough back. He, he is a tough back, though. It, it's it, like I said, three, two, two or three defensive ends are coming, brushing them down, and 
sometimes it's just you gotta lose you're gonna lose your battles and unfortunately Andre Brown is not gonna plow through three guys like we had out of Brendan Jacobs um sometimes it's just the way it is we we just gotta get the blocks down and find ways to get, get those extra gritty yards that I know Brown and William uh Wilson can get if all things go to plan so it is really up to the offensive line when it comes to that stuff. And, of course, the skill of running backs. But if the offensive line isn't blocking, we're not going anywhere with the running. It's just gritty football 101, and everybody knows that. But like we, like you said, um, comes down to, and we said before, and, and the chemistry of the offensive line. And that's line. what sucks because um, that's why our blue uh, red zone offense is scared. Not the greatest because Eli doesn't want to run the ball. He's be- he trusts his arm a lot better. So something crazy happens and we don't score. You know what I'm scared? What I, I'm getting sick of with the line, with the red zone offense, is when it comes down to first and goal. Last year also, and probably probably the end of the year before, every time was, okay, let's spread out the receivers, have one running back in the back. Let's run that HB draw play. Yeah, and well, every team knows that play's coming. What I I wish I if, love that play. If we get if we get the running game going, and them respecting the run, and play action again. We haven't really last year. We didn't really use play action a lot. We did we not as great as we did in past years. But the play action. If we get the play action pass going. Anything happen? And Eli is one of the best play action pass guys. Victor Cruz down the seam. Lewis Murphy's gonna who's gonna I'm calling it now. Lewis Murphy's gonna have a big game against Dallas. He's gonna have at least one touchdown on a deep flag. The Giants haven't shown that yet. Um, it's gonna be amazing. I, I I think the Giants are gonna be ready for Week One against Dallas. They they're just not showing anything like every other NFL team. So, uh, stick with them. Uh, Monday uh, Saturday is gonna be interesting. The Snoopy Bowl. I think the Giants are gonna repeat just because we have better backups. And just the overall better team, but I really want to see what Geno Smith offers to the Giants' first team, and can he handle the pressures of a series more than a couple series versus the big boys? The better question is, who's he throwing to? Uh, Stephen Hill <laughs> and Stephen Hill, uh, Curly, Braylon, Braylon. Um, it's gonna be a rough time, but you know, Braylon like, also drives around in the parking lot for Giant games and hands out garbage bags. <laughs> I'm not yeah. kidding. The guy looked exactly like Braylon Edwards. That's cool. I thought it was. I said to my dad, I go, that's Braylon Edwards handing out garbage bags. And then he reminded me he's got to do something in case he doesn't make the team. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Um, next week we will football. have our preview show. Football preview show next week. We have a bunch of guests coming on talking Giants, Jets. NFC, AFC. And, uh, NFC, AFC, and who they think they're going to win the Super Bowl and their MVP picks. Uh, that's That was our uh, football preview. Go Giants. Best of luck in all your fantasy drafts. A lot yeah, of them. We have, I have three this weekend. So. I have three this weekend we have the one next tuesday yep, so so good luck in all those of course yep. next week is the final week of the preseason and our preview show but right now we're going to go play a little more violence in the season snd podcast is in no way affiliated with associated with produced or endorsed by the national football league or any of its affiliates Back to the S and D podcast show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Stephen and Dan are here. Uh, tonight was a fun show. Yeah, it's definitely it was a fun show. Uh, a lot of football to talk about. It's it's start, starting. Yeah, feel to get is that. getting it. This feel is starting to come in the air. Uh, a bunch of fantasy drafts coming up this weekend. Yes, best of luck, like we mentioned before, to everybody yes, with their drafts um, coming up. Mets and Yankees are both playing respectable baseball at the moment. The Yankees a little bit more respectable. They're fighting back into the playoff contention. The Mets are still just keeping face and being scrappy, which is great to see. Um, it's it, it's just all oh, that's all you can ask for, for as a New York sports fan, especially as a Met fan, is as long as they're playing well, that's all you, we can ask for. Giants, hopefully everybody stays healthy. Jets, hopefully their Got offense some stuff to wakes show. up. They, their offense wakes up because we know Rex Ryan's defense is going to be Rex Ryan's D. It's going to be a fun game. Hopefully, no one there isn't any key injuries coming out of both the teams for both teams. Both Just, teams. We don't need that, and the best team gets the Snoopy Bowl, which is not a big deal. It's just good for charity, which is I'm always down for. Right. Speaking of, 
Big enough. Uh, love for Lisa. Love for Lisa. Sunday, don't forget, at McFadden's. They're, I'm sure they're doing a couple of things before the game at McFadden's, but it's definitely... I feel like there is something before the game also. But but it's good. The, most of the charity event is going to be after the game at McFadden's. So a lot of players have stepped up and give Darren from the 7 line a lot of memorabilia to send off for raffles. Yes. Also, if you can get... Uh, which is pretty cool. Don't forget, which is pretty cool that the Mets don't have to do it. But from the kindness of their heart, they definitely did that. Well, so while we're talking Mets. charity, um, if you can go on Mets.com, uh, they have the game on the 23rd, the Friday night game against the Tigers. $35 gets you in, gets you a Jay Harris about social media night. Oh, yeah. For, uh, hope, hope for, for Sharon. Hope for Shannon. Shannon. Shannon, who also has breast cancer. So that's a great cause as well. I know Lisa bought tickets for that because, yeah, of course. well. We all know. Thank you to her again for last uh, absolutely. week. Absolutely. It was um, great motivation. Thank you for, as always, coming on. Yes. Um, hopefully we have you on soon, and hopefully good news and progress. Yes. Best of luck for everything with you. I know she went to the game. I think it was last night, the 20th. She did. She, um, the, if you don't that, follow, they won. They won. Maybe it's a good luck charm. And she, she got some field passes for batting practice. So that was pretty rad. So she, she looked like she had a blast. I actually talked to her today, and she had so much fun. She, she's so grateful of everything that the Mets have helped her out with. Yes, and I know Jay Horowitz is helping her out as well. Yes, Talks so. to her a lot. I see that. Um, a little Division 1.1 1. 1 news. Uh, I said earlier, check them out on Facebook. Uh, they have some T-shirts and stuff. Yep. They're actually one of like uh, the top bands overseas right now. Eng- they're hitting it big over in Ireland, <laughs> England. I don't know when we're going, but hopefully we'll do a show from there one day with them. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> they just take us overseas. Yeah, know? no, congrats to them. It, it, they deserve it. They've been working their nuts off, so... Congrats to them. Keep it up, and I can't wait to listen to the new new stuff. If you like the stuff that we play on our show now, you don't even want to know how much better it's going to be next time around. Believe me, I've heard a demo the other day. Brian was playing for me at the game. Um, I'm excited for that. Uh, I'm always in contact with him. Uh, we have some cool things hum- up with them also. Uh, like I said, they have some T-shirts. They have a trucker hat online. Check them out on Facebook. Uh, we'll repost that also. Also, there's a uh, radio station on Wednesdays. Wednesdays that play their stuff. Play so their stuff, yeah. I don't have it off the top of my head. It's some New Jersey we're gonna, local yeah, we're station. Gonna, we're going to put it on, up on Facebook when we see it. So, um, once again, thanks for their support. Don't forget Shock Sports. It's fantasy season coming up. Yes, so Keith, follow them. Follow Keith them. and uh, Joe are definitely writing their Keith's little doing, parts out. So Keith's been doing something with also late-round quarterback. It's a website with fantasy. Um, I know we're also in talks with Keith. We're going to try and get a weekly, se- a little weekly yeah. segment, fantasy football, who to sit, who not to sit, um, at least for our own teams. Yeah. Have them do our own teams. Um, but anywho, tonight was a great show. Had a lot of fun. Don't forget next week is our f- football preview show. Uh, we have Giants in the NFC. Giants, so- Jets, Dolphins. It's, it's going to be a cluster next week, but it's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, we're going to have our predictions and see how badly wrong we were in February when the teams are playing for the Super Bowl and everything like that. I can't wait. It's, it's gonna always be fun. fun. It's always fun. So it's the best part about the podcast. It we really just, is. We could mess laugh, up everything. Laugh at each other. Um. Anyway, this is our show. Have a great day. I hope day. everybody else Good is night. laughing at us, too. And enjoy, all right? Yes. Thanks again Don't for forget, listening. Love for Lisa Sunday. Sunday. Have, have a good one. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.